So, our session today, David, is called Under Control. And whenever I think of the term under control, I kind of, I always think of that swan. <clears throat> you know, you know what I mean, in terms of what the legs are doing to what is visible. And this time of year, as school leaders, as teachers, it's a very challenging time of year. So why now and why, why under control and why now is my question for you? Well, I, I, typically, our New Year's resolutions, obviously, are, you know, other, if you don't work in a school, you are thinking about the things that you can do better, your lifestyle, how you can change things. And obviously, um, that happens on New Year's Day and you, you make those resolutions and plans. But in actual fact, I think once you work in schools, we set out quite often to have those New Year's resolutions on the 1st of September. We start to think about really all of the time uh, over the summer, we start to think about the way that we work. And we set ourselves a couple of little things that we're gonna do better. And I, more often than not, from my point of view as a head teacher, I would always start the year saying, I'm going to give myself breaks. I'm going to take dedicated headship time. Um, I'm going to, I'm going to meditate. <laughs> you know, I'm going to, I'm going to have 10 minutes in the morning of, of kind of mindfulness, which is going to set me up for the day and, and you know, everything that the books tell you would pay off and it would make you a great capable, sustainable leader. And, and obviously when September comes, we have a real pressure point and then we are so busy back to work and before you know it business as usual and we are doing the same things and have the same habits that we had previously so i think really one of the the things with under control whilst we may not be sitting on our desk as the picture illustrates uh, taking a moment of mindfulness in actual fact the summer term and this term in the background we can be just starting to think about the things we want to review change and improve and i don't mean kind of your school improvement priorities what i mean is the systems and approaches that we have to monitoring observing and i'm going to throw those terms out there because we are going to redefine them we're going to change and rethink those things but we're, we're, let's, let's let's hang them out scrutinies and all those kind of words um <clears throat> but we're going to take a little bit of time this morning really just to think about how we can kind of plant a few seeds and, and think about how we hit the ground running and do things differently in September. So how, what can we do and what can we start to think about that's going to leave us well placed so that when we start in September, we can really hit the ground running and we can dedicate the time to welcoming the children back into school and at the same time have things a little bit under control. So for the different things that we do in the classrooms, the uh, the monitoring, the observations, the appraisals, whatever they may be, uh, capturing what we're doing in school. Can we do those things differently? So if we plant that seed now in the summer term, have a look, have a think. The, the idea is that we take the holiday then knowing how we're going to take care of those things and having a good idea about what we can do differently come September. And that's really, I'm going to ask you a question now, because whilst I talk about the advantages of having those in, things in hand, I'm interested from your point of view uh, as a head teacher, if you were starting back in September and you've had a, a big school year and then you have that moment where you realise you have to do it all over again, and then you <laughs> head back into school, you welcome the staff in, and before you know it, once the children have settled, you're into that cycle, that routine, and you're creating diaries of activities all around monitoring, observations, those kind of things. You tell me a little bit about how that went. What did you find and how did you approach those things? Yeah, well, I think when I look back to being ahead, what I wanted to happen and what actually happened were two different things. And I think that's <laughs> fairly common from the, from the head teachers I work with now. You got a vision of what you want to happen and you got a vision I suppose of what I want it to look like from the teacher's point of view. Um, so, you know, we have the monitoring timetable that we might look at a, a step up and have a look about when are the pressure points. And we try to address those, but purely because there are so many other elements to teaching and, you know, yes, we can, we know when the parents evenings are, and we know when the disco might be and, and things like that, but we don't know when, the general pressures of teaching and learning are going to be there. So we could do our best to try and plan those out. But mm. 
when we're talking about, you know, you mentioned about those words monitoring and scrutiny and, you know, subject leadership and all these things on top of what teaching is all about, you end up with a calendar that's rammed packed full of a busy schedule. Mm. Uh, and for me, um, I'll, I'll look at it in two parts. Right? I'll look at it from the teacher's point of view, from my point of view as a head teacher. You know, my teachers were all subject leaders. And I think we can all agree that when, you know, in the late noughties, when the whole deep dive thing started to appear, it kind of ramped up the pressure of subject leaders. And, okay, they're doing that. If you can pitch the jigsaw, you know, they're doing their job. They're monitoring their subject. They're filling their subject file mm. with things uh hopefully throughout the year and some do that way better than others um you know and some subjects kind of have a bit of a bit more weighting to it that you can give mm. a bit priority to but from my point of view as a head teacher getting access to that data was really difficult because it meant i needed to you know i needed to uh, request files to be handed in which in itself, from a teacher's point of view, if you remember, is always quite a stressful thing. Uh, asking for things to be handed in like books and you'd, you'd chew, you know, you chew three middles. They want, somebody wants, the literary coordinator wants three middles. I'd be making sure they were three very good middles, mm -hmm. you know, which probably defeats the object, but it, yeah. it's very personal and you feel it. there's a responsibility there. And a similar thing, when I'm asking for files to be handed in, then I know it's causing a pressure point. Absolutely. Uh, that takes time. It takes time to get them in. It takes time for me to have a look at where, where is the information I want, you know, because it's full of all kinds of stuff. Mm. Um, and so you end up with a timetable that might look okay, but in practical, in practical terms, a lot of what we're doing is fairly unmanageable mm. Um, mm. to do and to sustain it. So, yeah, I'd like to paint a picture of, you know, a, a serene, calm ocean. But quite often, it's a, you know, uh, a force nine gale. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Choppy waters and stressful situations, which we do our best to try and avoid, but yeah, it's hard not to do. Exactly. And I think that's the nature of the job. Like you say, you have those pressure points, uh, quite a lot of which as a head teacher are unexpected. So, you know, we know when those things can occur. So today's session, really, the reason why I asked you that question is I want to be able to kind of help you and other school leaders. We want to be able to kind of offer solutions um, for those things, which are all common. And school leaders talk to me and to us and to the company about all of the time. So if, uh, if today we're going to take a we're going to look at the platform and think about how we can use iPads and tablets to be able to capture best practice in school. And today's going to be really a a kind of demo session if you like um, but at the same time what we're going to be doing is going to be looking specifically at opportunities to be able to work efficiently so looking at the the little agenda that we've got there really prioritizing time and energy is what we every time we get to this end of the year and we are shattered we start to then think that needs to be a priority i would say as a good leader as a good head teacher if you are able to review and consider the ways that your leaders work to make it more sustainable, then you are looking after their well-being. So we talk about yeah. well-being, we talk about strategies to be able to help staff with their well-being. But in actual fact, I think the best way to be able to do that is to look at the, the, the approaches that we take. And subject leadership is where there, there is some real demand. So the second point there, sustainable subject leadership. So we've had an increase in accountability. We know that inspection adds pressure and there's additional demands there. We know that staff with responsibilities, dependent on the size of the school, can have two, three subjects and aspects. Uh, we know that they also have class responsibilities more often than not. So we, have, we can't do things the way that we used to do things. And when people talk about quality assuring, we need to rethink that. And that's why we can use iPads to help us with that. We're going to take a look at how we can set up a learning walk. So we're just going to think about how we can do it. Um, and then we're going to uh, have a little think as well about a book study. So a quick look really at the approaches with both of those things. Those are two of a, 
uh, a suite of frameworks that are built into the system but those are the two that are going to give us a lot of joy and are really the backbone of your subject leader toolkit um, we're, we're going to look and think then about being able to see your teaching and learning so how everybody contributes to painting a picture building up so you can quality assure we're not going to compromise on uh, the quality or the rigor of the approach so whilst we may not be doing formal observations we're still going to have reports and we're going to do things frequently so we're capturing things accurately and then we're going to think just finally really about how we can build that community how we can connect with people potentially and the support that nautilus has to be able to help people uh, as well as you know to get the best out of the platform okay. that's fine yeah and i'll just add, add one more thing to kind of the whole timetable issue and i remember mm. this is a bit of a um a disclosure uh, about my own practice really but i remember being a classroom teacher middle leader um subject you know a couple of subject leaders and there were some deadlines approaching mm. and i remember feeling that teaching the actual teaching of my class was an inconvenience mm. And that's really mm. when i look back now and i think about it is because i had these extra deadlines yeah and i I wasn't I was thinking about when I might get my next 10 minutes to finish that or mm -hmm. I need this I need I need this printing and I need to get this in the file to give in for tomorrow and yeah the teaching became a secondary aspect and it was looking back now that's quite shocking and if anything we can do to make that not happen I'm all ears well I think I think uh, that is if we can manage to to have methods for all of our staff to contribute to this picture and get that genuine distributed leadership where they know their subject and aspect uh, and then are knowledgeable enough to be able to make recommendations that are accurate then we've got a really sound school improvement process but building that like you say all of the pressures are what compromises that and I think it's the holy grail if you can get that however I would say for, for my years of headship I often didn't get that. And one thing I can remember very, very quickly is I remember talking to staff about um, standards in the classroom and high expectations, and then walked out of the room really realizing that none of them had seen each other teach. So their only insight in relation to what standards look like in the school was from their own practice. So we needed to be kind of break down, you know, not build, knock down walls and get people to understand what somebody else does at the other end of the school that's good. Uh, and how can we kind of share and, and create those opportunities for people to be able to sort of see best practice across the school rather than just perceive that everybody does it the same way. So um, lots of things here, hopefully, that will kind of tap into that and cover it. So I'm, I'm going to log into the platform. So as we know, it's web based, it's, it's cloud based. And, and so that means everything sort of stored on Amazon Web Service London. Uh, we can log in and the whole idea is that we can pick up any device tablets laptops ipads and then we can use that to be able to access so no no installations really as far as apps are concerned i'm in the uh the the dashboard now i'm on the dashboard so the subject leader dashboard and i talked about seeing your teaching and learning that's the whole idea here is that we can funnel <coughs> excuse me everything into one place but what i'm going to do is i'm, I'm going to come back to this page shortly and then we'll unpick it a little bit more once we've seen kind of what the process actually looks like so we can take a little uh, think about the how to so on the settings the first thing that i do before i add my users is i'm just going to show you here we've got a rubric in the background that's going to help us to be able to assess uh, to evaluate to identify strengths and areas for improvement it's a really useful tool when it comes down to getting that insight and analysis, which is going to work in the background very discreetly. Um, and and the, the default setting that we have is, is the Ofsted terms, because we want to be able to create reports that will take care of inspections and support, you know, our, our conversations in meetings with LA, diocese, uh, governors and so on with those, those terms. But in actual fact, internally, I'm going to change uh, the, the, the look and feel of the whole process. So I'm going to reword it and i'm going to use prioritize and develop effective and highly effective and i've just changed the color schemes as well so we could change it however we want to do it yes we've got a good balance of challenge and support we've still got you know an element of kind of uh, insight that the rubric is going to give us but as far as how people feel about it i think that makes a big difference certainly changing ri to good which can feel like pass or fail so i'm can I just to uh, of, all. of course yeah, in so I, I'm thinking there, a good start would be, what I would do here is I'd yeah. be having a chat with the, all the staff sure. saying, let's come up with our own. 
and mm. yeah, I could steer that, and we've got we've got options there. But yeah, there's that er- there's that element of ownership um, that possibly you know that that's a good move, a positive move away from yeah the game. Yeah, definitely. I mean, I I, I think that it's really um, a, a great moment you know the opportunity to be able to to sit down and say what terms shall we use with your leaders and say why you've chosen them and to to reword uh, to reframe the whole process with them i think is a great way to, to to work absolutely that consultation and again talking about distributed leadership so here on the users i'm starting on the left hand side the orange buttons are, are basically for uh setting up the learning walks administration preparing those kinds of things uh, and also to learning walks, book studies, surveys too. Uh, and then we've got over here on the blue buttons, the analysis, the reports, the feedback channels, lots of different ways of doing that. All instant, by the way, and uh, and the gallery as well. So we can look and see what we've captured there. Um, and also the builder, which we'll touch on very lightly today, but that's the big disclaimer because that's the place where you can create and edit your own content. You can share content you can edit our content uh so you we know you've got great ideas so that allows you to be able to to set up and, and put your own activities onto the system and we'll finish then by going back to the settings we'll revert it back just at the end so you can get an idea really as to uh <coughs> how it looks and feels and the use really for those offstead descriptors uh in the right places so here we've got um users so i'm going to add my observers so here i'm going to add the names of my team so if i add uh ted uh smith in here and the email address that will send out an email to ted it means that he can then log in um, we can then uh, choose their role so for example ted would be a let's think a little bit about what you've been saying there let's let's have a little look here and let's find a subject leader <clears throat> um early years senior let's go in uh, let's have a, a senior leader shall we um I'm scrolling past. There we go. Um, so senior leader. Um, and now what we can do is consider what they need to see. So priority user can see everything on the system. Head teachers, deputy heads, they can see everything that's coming into the system, uh, which is important for their confidence. This is what I mean about seeing your teaching and learning. The leadership user, well, everybody, as we mentioned, is a leader. So they can see what they need to see. So they will be able to see their content that they put into the system, their learning walks, book studies. They could set them up as well and, and do them, uh, them with, with autonomy. Um, and also they'll be able to see on their dashboard, if we choose to, we can, we can select what insights they get. So a leadership user here, I'm going to choose, um, this person has subject responsibilities. So this person's responsible for science and DT. So Ted's my new appointment, science and DT. What that means just by allocating those subjects here is that we can then on the dashboard, uh, we can configure it so that they can they will have a subject specific dashboard. So Ted will be able to see science or DT and toggle between the two and he will have a subject specific dashboard. We can also do it. David, I'm, I'm, I'm getting a little bit excited, David. Okay. Are you going to point something because, out that's good? Uh, uh, that's what I was asking for. I was looking for. Well, I'm, I'll tell you why I'm getting a little bit excited is mm. because, you know, one of the problems I've said before about mm. handing in files and yep. I've got a feeling, I think I know where this is going, where as a, if I'm a priority user and my leadership team are priority users, mm. we can go mm. in and see all these files whenever we want. Well, I mean, as a priority user, you see everything. So as a head teacher, we see all of the content coming into the system, all of the pictures, all the learning walks. As a as a middle leader or as a, a leadership user, if you like, which is that middle tier, I can now see my content. I can contribute to the process, but I can see what I need to see. I don't need to see everybody's. I just need to see science and DT. So that means I can use that to feedback. So I'm getting what I need as a leadership user. So this system really is a, a leadership uh, platform which means that it's for all leaders it's not a top-down approach it just enables everybody to have a, a systematic way of working and again going back to how we enable our subject leaders to be knowledgeable about their subjects or aspects so that's um so so i've set up ted there um if he's uh and and then that means that he will have that subject specific dashboard the third tier is a user so in here uh, this person 
is not going to have those subjects. So this person's a user, could be a governor, it could be somebody external. So I'll check the box to say that that person's external. And that could be the subject leader from the school down the road who's coming in to work with us. So if we're doing a book study or some moderation together throughout the year, some school improvement work, learning walks together, I could check that box and it says that they're external. And that way through the system, it really makes clear that we're working with those external partners. So it could also be um, on that user setting, it could also be a governor. It could be, uh, you know, the LA advisor, anybody that you want to work with you uh, to be able to contribute to your picture. So as we can see so here. I, yep. If I've got a school improvement partner mm. coming in yep. on Monday next week, I could organize a learning walk yep. and include them. Yeah, I'll show you a really quick way to be able to do it as well. So we've got our external partners here. You can see we don't charge. There's no additional cost to put external people on. So your team of observers can be, yes, your internal leaders, but also those people who you work with where you've got really good professional partnerships or you just want to get the best use out of those couple of hours that you've got with your, your advisor. So here we've got, we're, we're adding our team to the system. By the way, when you do add your teachers, that's a good opportunity to be able to say that they're going to be able to use the system and contribute to the picture, which I think is, again, a good way of uh, helping them to, to appreciate that this system is for them too, and they're going to be able to, to, to use it for their, for their leadership. Um, so yes, they're going to be, that's our team of observers. Uh, yes, then we add our team of staff in the classroom. So yes, they're going to be sort of kind of dual registered, if you like. But going back to what you're saying, this act as tab is really helpful for uh, how we work with somebody. So if I'm working with James, who is external, you can see the boxes checked there as a consultant. I invite him in. I log on to two iPads, and then on one of them, if I click that button, it will switch that device across to James. And that just means that we can set off into the corridors. Doesn't need to bring an iPad, doesn't need to follow a link, doesn't need to log in. So it's a good way to be able to invite and just in seconds be uh, be ready to go. That, I'm just thinking out loud as well here. Sorry, Dave, I keep- No, please uh, do, please, here, but, please do. Um, I'm thinking of my time as a head teacher with my school improvement partner coming in, mm. especially when I was a new head teacher. These were, these were my pressure points. Mm. Um, and I would try and keep that away from the teachers. Yeah. Um, that is all under control. Yeah. Well, I, I, I did a learning walk with one of my schools in the LA the other week, and we were we were looking at support staff. So I, I was able to go in, and uh, when we arrived, the head teacher had two iPads, and I just literally showed her. She logged in on both, and then she clicked that button across to me. She'd added me as a user, and we just went and did it. So in 10 minutes, nice and quick and she got for her a couple of hours with me the report at the end of it was there so it was done there was no reporting to do so I was That's great it. it's kind of my agenda yeah um and and in those early days i'd have really appreciated that because mm. i was probably coming in and it was the school improvement partner's agenda yeah and actually i should be the one that directs where i want the help and support yeah and that's great exactly as a school improvement partner what you really want to see is it's an invitation when you're going into school to do some school improvement work that they are the ones the the, the head teacher is the person saying we'll do it our way and you're able to kind of validate and look at how they do it and then you can contribute and help and support if needs be if you're doing it your way then it just becomes kind of like an external sort of process really you're losing a, a dimension uh, of insight that could really help with the entire school improvement process. So if you take hold of it and I come for a walk in your school and you're all set and ready, we go off into the corridors and you you take you know you you grab hold of that and you you tell me where you want me to what you you know you instruct and direct that. Then I, I think that that is a really good way for me to be able to kind of help with that your process and also at the same time to be able to see how you do things. Um, so on the create area here. We're going to set up a learning walk. So this is this is kind of the, the big how to really in the session. So it's going to be uh, for this one, it's going to be key stage to English. And I'm going to put in summer 23 as well. So I'm label labeling the focus. So we're going to choose uh, a learning snapshot um, in here. And there's 10 frameworks in the system. But the learning snapshot is just a really good way to kind of the, the whole idea with the terminology is it's that quick capturing business as usual. So we can build the picture, uh, create a process that gives us accuracy. And along the way, 
offer feedback and dialogue to our colleagues. Uh, the reason with this learning snapshot, because it's very generic, it's very light touch, it's very flexible, I'm going to give it a very specific focus, which is why I'm calling it Key Stage 2, Summer 23. So when I key in here, English, it will bring up all of my English back catalogue, English Key Stage 2, it will refine that search, I can find things nice and quick. Um, <clears throat> I'm going to choose English here. So make it subject specific. So this in, this data is basically going to head to the English dashboard so I can apply filters. And when we say judgments, really, I mean, we've redefined it. We've changed the terminology. I'm going to show you what they look like with those terms that I've added and then without with the, with the book study. So we'll get an idea, but you can switch them off regardless if you don't want to use anything. Um, and as I add that, there's my learning snapshot. It's not ready. It's, uh, you know, we've we've created it, but we haven't added the observers. So this is now going to be uh, me and I'm Jules Verne. And I'm going to do this learning walk with my English lead. And I'm going to do the learning walk as well with Wally, who's the English lead from the school down the road. So we're going to invite somebody in. And then on the report, it's going to be clear that we're working with that external partner, which will ramp up the credibility of that report, which is really helpful when we want to add weight to what we're doing. Um, and we're going to go see four teachers. So let's go see Charles. Um, let's go see James, uh, Jules. Oh, no, that's me. Kirk. Oh, there we go. Four people. Uh, add that to the system. So four people, four visits, four classroom visits. That's about an hour between five and 15 minutes. And again, this is about frequency. It's not in the diary as well, by the way. We haven't said that this has, has to happen between 10 and 11 on Tuesday. We may suggest that to the staff, but it might roll. So we might actually go, and, this might be over a week if we're doing drop-ins. If I'm a Senko and I'm doing a, a send uh, evaluation, I might do it over a two weeks so uh, it's done when it's done and that gives you the flexibility to work around the diary so we're talking at, at the beginning about the pressure points and making sure that we've got that flexibility when it comes down to popping into the classrooms when we've got leadership management time um, i have to stop you there david yeah please do because <clears throat> you've just said something there that, that is you said four people in an hour yeah now that's not in a lot of schools and including my school that yeah. would be four hours work well yeah exactly i mean i think that if if we are thinking really if we are if we're taking a step back and thinking what is the purpose of this now we are used to doing one hour observations which more often than not are inaccurate inaccurate we call them fireworks lessons um for the benefit of pay and career stage they're very formal and at the end of it, because it's not entirely accurate, because it's a sure lesson, it's not business as usual. And so therefore, the feedback is not accurate. Uh, it's not meaningful. And so it's not going to kind of improve. It's not going to help. It's not professional dialogue that's going to help a teacher to get better at something. Uh, it's not going to improve standards across the school. So it's really just an appraisal checklist. So with this, we, if we're planning on between five and 15 minutes and popping into classrooms we are saying to the staff that we want to see business as usual and it's typical and then we are creating feedback along the way so ultimately uh, we can visit more often than not more often across the school but it's less formal and less uh, less risky really for for the team and, and, and thinking of that then yeah shifting that culture or using something like nautilus to shift that culture mm. it's going to be very pop it's going to, going to be popular with the teachers surely because you're moving away from the nobody likes the formal observations yeah, yeah. they're yeah. time consuming they take a lot of time for teachers to be over planning over resourcing mm. Mm. over teaching over talking everything um not reflecting the general diet that the children are getting day in day out so yeah if we if you can move to that culture of little and often yeah much better picture happier stuff yeah and you as a head teacher know a little bit more about your school and i would say the reason why people can be cautious when it comes down to making those kind of shifts is the evidence so they feel like we don't you know that the, the, when we do a formal observation we write a long report it goes on the serve and therefore we're dotting the i's and crossing t's it was kind of we're kind of mistaking thorough for effective, if you like there. I mean, what we're doing here um, is we're not compromising on the reports, the feedback, everything else. I can click and I can show this to 
anybody else to evidence things if I need to do, but we're not doing it for the benefit of evidence. So it's it's really changing the way that we kind of think about these things. But let's not forget, you're talking about the staff. This They are using it as well. So yes, it's mm. English today with me, but next Tuesday it could be science and the week after it could be. So we've got to change things in order for those things to be more viable and for them to work more effectively and for people, you know, for it to be accurate. Uh, so there's a there's a whole raft of things going on underneath and a legacy that we've inherited that we can kind of readdress without compromise. So here on the walks, I've moved across and this is listed my classroom visits here. So you can see here um, as I go down the corridor with my colleagues, I can click to pass to, uh, participate once I get to James's classroom. And I'm, I'm just going to pop over to this little uh, tool that I've got here <coughs> because this is a good way for me to be able to uh, to show to show you all how things work and and are configured, and I think it's it's a good way to get a feel for that idea on the iPad of just closing the laptop, discovering how things look in school, and being able to make improvements. And I think there's hopefully there's a little bit of adventure around that. There's a, a joy to that because uh, we want as leaders, as head teachers to be in classrooms. We want to be seeing things, capturing things, knowing things. And it's a good, you know, that's the whole idea, obviously, once we're mobile like this. So as I click here, it brings up a framework. And what we've got here is we've got, the reason why we've got a framework is that we want consistency. <clears throat> so we want to guide the observers. So there's three of us. So we need to be looking at the same key aspects. Um, what we need is a common language, so everybody's kind of focusing and using the same terminology, but we don't want it to be too excessive, too much detail, because this is not a checklist exercise, this is not teacher standards and Ofsted descriptors. And so therefore what we're looking at here is just four areas. So as we pop into each classroom, we're looking at basically behaviour, teaching, learning and outcomes. So we started off and it was very detailed, lots of content. And inevitably, what the rule would be that on your learning walks, the more you put into here, the longer you'll have to spend in the classroom to verify those things, to see them and to put your professional neck on the line. So if we break it down into four for each teacher, I can I can give them some good recognition. I can spot the good stuff. I can share best practice and I can give them one or two possibly recommendations. So it's not excessive and it can be, you know, we can work on those the next day or the same day. So it's really manageable. Um, and like I say, we just have that that guidance. So as I walk into the classroom here, uh, and it's putting an emphasis on me as an observer, so I can see that the children are engaged. So I'm just going to put in here, what is the teacher doing to engage the children? So rather than saying, do this, do this, do this, check, 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 and quite often learning walks are monitoring, uh, and the, the, they happen periodically in between formal observations. So we've got two different kind of, approaches going on so with this one really what we're doing is we're we're looking to see what the teacher's skill set is so for this i might be looking at their uh, relationships the positive reinforcement the classroom management i could be looking as well at the pitch and pace i could be looking at the use of uh, questioning or positive reinforcement lots of things that it could be but I'm not dictating that. So I can see that. And so therefore in here, and I can also consider what's typical because as a head, I know the teachers well. Anything less, I might give a recommendation in here and a suggestion, which is fine. If you're teaching nine subjects, we have to acknowledge there's going to be some that we teach better than others. Are we okay? And are we comfortable in being able to access feedback i think we should be and that is useful but again we're making it clear that this is not an appraisal based exercise this is a school improvement and professional dialogue situation um, as we move across here and then we go down into prioritize uh, it might be something that we need to pick up on quickly and we might have something to take care of and we can take, check a box that will help us to do that and that means we can come back to that but but, but equally as much if it is highly effective it could also be a next step because we could take that and share it. So we've got some some good things going on there and a very different way of working, which enables us to work very quickly, efficiently and again, accurately. Uh, management and organisation, basically subject knowledge, use of ICT, pitch and paste of the curriculum, topic, themes, planning, sequence of learning, all, all kinds of things. But again, we're assessing and looking for the indicators, finding out what the teacher does well, putting that into there, what is typical as well. 
uh, based on what we know already about that teacher pupil contributions could be pe could be science could be you know all kinds of things we could be looking at here so it doesn't necessarily mean working books but it could be and if it is working books then we can come back afterwards we might pause the observation and come back afterwards and see what the outcomes were in the books uh, in the same way that we might pause the observation and we might have a chat about it we might discuss things as well step outside talk to our colleagues or just come back and put the uh, entries in later uh, value little term that we use a bit more subjective but really outcomes it's a little summative statement sits more comfortably with subject leaders across school uh, reg regardless of career experience it means that if when if we use the term progress achievement attainment ARE subject to Ofsted definitions and numerical thresholds and we found when we were developing that we couldn't get the leaders out of the classroom they had to start from the start till the end stay in the classroom and uh, you know to verify the progress and that means that basically it becomes more formal you can do it less often and you know there's implications there so value means that we can talk about progress but we're not shackled to it so we can come out and say i think that or you know and suggest what you know how effective that lesson was and it's a good way to be able to kind of make that work um, and then really what we're going to do is we're going to take a photo so in here a toggle camera and because we've got our, the beauty of the devices that we've got we can now take a picture as well so i'm kind of my camera's not in use uh, but here if we are wiring all of our leaders to take photos as they are in the corridors and classrooms then what we're doing is we're building a portfolio in the gallery which is communal of best practice and that is really going to help us to be able to raise standards so i'm just going to show you what i'm going to do here so i'm tagging And what, I'm getting, what I'm, I'm getting excited. I'm getting yeah. excited, uh, David. Well, share your thoughts really about what you, what you see. I'm, I'm tagging in now some of yeah, the yeah. Uh, specifics. Again, I'm going to come back to the um, the issue of files and how number one how accessible those files are for for school leaders, but also what's the value of them sitting on a shelf being pulled out twice a year three times a year to add things to or to be seen but by tagging then we all know tags are searchable so you've tagged it you're tagging that english year for writing people premium descriptive writing expected standards so if i fast forwarding six months or so where my teachers mm. have been adding things that and a teacher could go in or i could go in or another teacher could go into the gallery and search for year four expected standards and a portfolio of work is going to be visible is that right that's right i mean we'll come back to the gallery uh, shortly and we'll take a, a little look at where this work goes but we're, we're, we're basically feeding the system at the same time as we do our learning walks and this is what we say about capturing so rather than observing if we want to use that term a little bit less and we want to kind of veer towards um capturing in actual fact we're capturing best practice all of our leaders sharing it raising awareness raising standards and the gallery is where we can do that and it's not an extra job so again from the start we're talking about sustainability rather than having your staff do this as an extra job go into the classrooms at the end of the day take pictures put them into a dusty file you know those kind of things this happens at the same time so it's aligning it with our workload um so i take the picture <coughs> excuse me that goes into the system um, and as we've done this uh, entry that's entry complete that goes uh, into the system too and then i've got my next three visits so obviously i can pop off into the classrooms um i'll just pop back to here just to mention very quickly that we can go into here and you can see here that's where it's completed that observation and i can go in and i can edit it um i can play around with it and then i can email it as well to my colleague directly if i just want to, to uh, offer some quick written feedback um so that's how the uh, the walks we set them up and that's how the the learning snapshot works if we take a little look at a book study um then then i can show you very quickly i'll set one of these up how we can use this and this time of the year is a fantastic time to do this so key stage one maths uh summer 23 and in here i'm going to 
fly through this we're going to use the book study tool we're going to make it a maths focus we won't use these judgments so you'll see what it looks like without <clears throat> there's our book study then we're going to decide who does it this is me i've got one hour of um time leadership management time and i want to see uh let's say we're a two-form entry so i get the books from charles chet ernest and gloria each of those is going to give me three books let's say this is middle ability um, and that means that for each of these i'm going to do one entry i'm going to assess and evaluate their books and then i'm going to give them some recognition and some going to talk about what, what's going well and then some areas to consider so then as we move there across into the walks you'll see then it's listed here in the to do i take uh, gloria's three books <coughs> click to participate and again the framework i'm looking to assess presentation and with this really i think with, with maths it's a little bit different but we're looking at how the children set their work out equally as much uh, we're looking at maybe calculation policy as well uh, content so age appropriate program of study so we know what the sequence looks like the progression in skills pupil contribution uh, looking for regular and sustained application particularly in maths getting it wrong getting it right uh, progress on the day towards the objective monday to friday if they're doing fractions first page to last page at this time in the year we send the books home and yet they are full of the best progress that we can find in the school but we were quite happy to rely on data uh, because it's convenient but in actual fact here we can be capturing that progress using the photos and taking pictures challenge uh, an extension breadth of the curriculum marking and feedback uh, so you, the application of the school's policy not not anything that we would tell them what you know dictate what to do and again taking photos so i've got half an hour i can get this done i can also use the voice typing and let's not forget we can use a stylus there so if you want to use voice typing and, and you want to speed it up even more because it's only concise we only need one or two sentences uh, really in the in, in to, to feedback quite often we write big reports commentary and just to finish with two recommendations so why do we do that it's evidence so let's just get those two recommendations let's offer that that feedback in that way and like i said so I, 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 again i'm i'm <clears throat> seeing pictures in my head here david of mm -hmm. what it used to be like um me and possibly the english team sat around a table with a load of books scattered on the table yeah and we'll be opening the books and having a chat about it and, mm, what do you think and mm, you know not particularly following a, a guide yeah um mm. but just checking and now i'm thinking yeah i can see the same i can see the same scatter of books but my three or four staff have an ipad each and we're going through and we're actually following that um that that guide yeah i mean it's exactly you need some guidance you need a common language you need a blueprint if we talk about high expectations that's open to definition let's see let's give sufficient guidance to say what that can look like and where to look for it but let's not dictate how to do it the teachers need the teachers are the ones who work the magic we don't want to excessively moderate that so in actual fact th there's a lot of things uh, going on really when it comes it comes down to how we do it and the, the degree of content we put into our learning walks uh, and it is just really the priority is gu guidance and consistency the rest really should be more about outcomes it should be more about that feedback channel um, so very quickly as well on the system we can also do surveys so we've got a parents voice survey there and a pupil one we can create our own as you can edit and change all of the things that you looked at today but for this one, for example, parent and carer's voice, we can create a link. Uh, I'll use this uh, <coughs> page here, send that out to families. This one is the standard questions. They could do it on the phones, but basically that information then goes onto our dashboard and we've got the stakeholder views, pupil and children alongside all of our activities. So a massive time saving exercise, which means I could do year one today, year two tomorrow, year three, and I can do them quickly, often get the information, the reports are instant, so we're working on feedback uh, and actions rather than uh, reporting and administration. And like I say, you can create your own. So that was a, a, a massive labor saving opportunity and also the fact that you're going to see that in the same place as well so i'm conscious of time so we'll keep things moving and we'll start to look at the feedback we've looked quite a lot there at the process 
lots of different ways of feeding back. The workflow is basically a, a feed of all the commentary coming in. Um, so there's no judgments on here or, or statements in that sense. It is just literally the, the dialogue. For me as a priority user, I can see all of it. So I can actually start to get an idea as to what the quality of that dialogue looks like. For me as a science lead, I can just see mine. So I can use it. I can take my laptop or iPad. I can sit with a colleague. I can chat at the end of the day and I can feed back. So that, again, when it comes down to time. So after I've done the book study or learning walk, there's no administration. I can take this. I can have a chat. Yes, it's a bit softer, but it's more about being shoulder to shoulder and having that dialogue, really. If I want to add an action, I can do. So we might use this and, and let's, you know, let's revisit this or let's take this to the staff meeting next Tuesday. Uh, and in the same way, if I, I come up here and I click the actions, it will list all the ones that are live and I can check them off. So I've got a little to do list so I can work again and prioritize because a lot of efficiency when it comes down to working efficiently, it's about prioritizing what you do. So things that are high impact and low impact. So this is high impact because I'm giving the feedback, but I'm also giving it instantly. Uh, so this is a priority to be able to kind of see these things and to be able to check them off and, and action them. Uh, in the same way that I can list the next steps if I'd identified that, uh, you know, good or not so good. And we can check those off when those are done. We'll get a little growth icon. And that's just a nice way to be able to say that, you know, to be able to follow up as a leader and, it, it, you know, help staff to be able to to grow, to develop and things like that. So uh, so good little tools and the workflow is a good way to do things informally, um, albeit. So that's a really good informal feedback channel. As we head then for the dashboard, we're just going to fly through and kind of look and see here. So when it comes down to saving time, normally the time problem for this is that we have to click in, log on, drill down, filter, analyze, share reports, interpret reports, uh, identify and pluck through and find strengths and areas for improvement, then consider. So there's a whole chain of things which are really inefficient and all summative more often than not and data, like I say. But here we can see all of our teaching and learning. So what we're doing here is we're giving an aggregate score for each activity. We can see the amount of entries here, obviously what's in progress. We've got an average there. One is low, four is high. Create your own averages. No, it's not assigned to a judgment. It just enables us to see how each one compares and what the health is so we can act on those quickly. We've got a data set for each activity that we do. Uh, we're also using those terms there, which we've redefined. So you can see here learning snapshots. We can see what the outcomes are. Um, and and uh, if we want to do then we can start to filter as well. So once we start to filter by English, maths and so on, it makes it much easier to see very quickly and to compare and get additional insight as well as to be able to see the activities that have taken place. So I can go through those and I can start to, uh, to work on those. And so if I clear that, just because that applies it to the whole system. Sorry, you can see here as well, parent carers views. Not much in mind because it's a demo account, but you can see you get the idea. So as we then start to kind of look a little bit closer, key stage two um, in here, whoops. I can start to then start, you know, pull things up nice and quickly. I've got a learning walk here, 20 contributions, fairly healthy outcome can see the headlines nice and quick. So I can have the conversation. I can talk to my leaders the same day. I can drop in before I go home, see what the outcomes were. I can see uh, if I want to look closer at each entry, it's give me again a ballpark figure. Who's been involved, highs and lows, a little bit of data comparing the all time data set with this exercise. And as we come down here, the same thing here. So big picture, this question over time, and then this one compared to it. So you can see how we can see things quickly, how we can act on things, how we can you know, talk knowledgeably about the curriculum and identify strengths uh, as areas for improvement. So, and as we take the report, we can choose the content. So all the reports are uniform. They're all really simple and they're all designed for easy consumption and easy shares. And I've got one here. So we can see it's very simple. It's easy to share. Governors can read it. Inspectors can read it, staff can see it on the same day. So I can download this, use it. I can say, thanks very much. It was really good. We can add weight. We, can, we don't undermine the, the process by delaying the feedback. Uh, highs and lows, again, the same content. We can see who's been involved. 
so that's good because we've got somebody external and we can see the same data so a quality of education on the top half all time compared to this exercise and a little bit of uh, interpretation so we can see what the outcomes were we can say to our staff this was good this was good this was good we're going to work on this and then further down we've got individual teacher feedback reports really to generate dialogue and like we said we had the work uh the workflow which was a, a very informal way this is a bit more formal uh and this is again in the interest of prioritizing so we can see where we need to act and where we need you know where needs must uh, feedback nice and concise so quick for staff to take away nice and informal quick conversation here here we might be looking at this person sharing with other people and here on this one you can see uh, less strong so therefore with this one I might be uh, I might be following it up or spending more time having a conversation moving quickly across we're flying through now uh, the dashboard uh, that was the dashboard and we looked at the reports the headlines for priority users only is designed to give our leaders confidence so as a head teacher i can now see my teaching and learning i can see what the outcomes are i can see you know what the uh, the frequency is we can pluck out some key insights and we can filter by subject which enables me to see more and to compare and to plan strategically which is really good it's not for everyone, but it certainly makes me as a head knowledgeable so I can talk about the staff. I can see what we need to do next, who needs what. Um, and that confidence is really important. We would hope, you know, we, we tend to use summative data again to do this. But this is building up at the same time. We're not doing it necessarily for this reason, but we've got this insight alongside, which is incredibly useful. Um, and I could talk knowledgeably to the governors about, you know, the, 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 the teaching and learning in our school. Trends, similarly, you know, data sets, mine's very chaotic uh, because it's a demo account in, in here. But once we start to, again, we funnel everything into one place. And once we start to filter, we can then start to see book studies, maths, English over time. We could see staff book studies, good for supporting professional dialogue, good for supporting appraisal without it being a checklist exercise. So we can acknowledge, and this will help us to you know to to have those conversations once we start to uh to filter for example by staff we can then start to talk to staff about what they've done commend them for the hard work and bearing in mind after each of these there has been some feedback some some recognition so this is less it's lowering the stakes of that meeting and yes we can look at strengths and areas for improvement we, we can also really see the big chain of things that the person's been involved in over time which is a great acknowledgement i would say so i'll come to the gallery now david just as we start to thinking about finishing off and you asked really about how this works so i will show you uh, you asked me really in here well I'll, I'll tell you what i'll just click around and you talk a little bit about what you're seeing okay so at the moment i'm seeing um different things like i see maths displays children holding up whiteboards, et cetera, all the, all the stuff you mentioned about capturing, which is great. So where can I, where would I be able to search for something in particular? You know, if I'm yeah, the math sure. coordinator. Or... Okay. Oh, okay. Then, well, if this is communal, so everybody can use this, by the way. So can I narrow that down to year three maths? You could oh, if you, you have the content in there. Mine's a demo account, so if I do put it in, oh. I might, I might, we could try it. Um, I'll see what, I'm not sure what we've put into there, so we'll see. Uh, bingo, there we go. Okay, so maths year three, yes. And we could continue so with that. Yeah, so I'm thinking, as I, I've got my head teacher hat on here, mm -hmm. um, induction process would include for me some time for my new teachers to go and explore uh, their area, their, their year group, so they can get an idea of pitch um, to help them with planning and things like that. So that looks really good. 
Well, we can use it for lots of reasons. It's kind of like a moderation way of working, but again, it's all stored. So we can put the characteristics in there and we can obviously be very specific writing year five biographies, whatever it may be, the areas of the curriculum. Um, uh, we can use it to quality assure. Uh, staff can go in and see what best practice looks like. They can see if they're new to year three, what lino printing looks like. The governors can see it, it can be shared lots of ways and for a head teacher you can see what your entire curriculum looks like and the best of it so i don't mean top of the class but the best expected standard the best send provision you know the best uh early years it all goes into the same place this demonstrates our curriculum and it's a really powerful way of raising standards equally as much as anything that we've done and yet it's taken no time at all because this job is aligned like i say with those other jobs so subject leaders are building this up contributing to this picture and it's just a really significant opportunity to show to demonstrate and to evidence but not for the benefit of evidence but to be knowledgeable uh, which is much more important so you get the idea and obviously pictures of children in class and once we start to look at not just subject tags but also aspects of send we can then get an idea as to what that can look like as well so um, lots of really good opportunities there to to use that to raise standards uh, across the school so that's the gallery and again we, we started off by talking about under control if we were doing these at this time of the year book studies now we would have the outcomes in the books and the progress demonstrated ready for september so in september we could come in we could look at this and we could see what standards can look like should look like at the end of the year if we are really working if we're all really working clever you know thinking smart about being able to do that before the books go home and we start fresh with empty books and then we all forget about what you know what standards could be like or we might have ects or people who are new to key stages and things like that um so just as we start to finish off the builder is the place where you can create and write your own uh, here you can see all the ones that we put into the system. So we've got 10 school improvement frameworks in those two surveys. If I like the book study, but I want to change it and I want to have a little play around, I can create another one. I can create a copy of it. And then with that clone up here, I can then start to edit those questions. So I can edit and create. Uh, some of the ones that we've made on the system, uh, support staff, learning support here looking at three different areas, relationships, engagement, subject knowledge. So it's a good one. And we did that with the support staff in a school. We talked to them beforehand about the lines of inquiries that we could use, which is what we're working with. Three lines of inquiries and then four prompts. Um, and we can also share across schools. So we could share with other Nautilus users, we can import and export. So that means that we can share content with similar schools, alternate, we've got schools who are APs, high schools, uh, we've got uh, Prue's, uh Send, different small schools, large schools, you get the idea, diocese schools, church schools, Catholic schools, whatever it may be, they can share content. The Welsh schools are doing that already and, and creating content in Welsh and then sharing it across uh, each other, uh, each other's settings, saving time, sharing good practice. Uh, and the way to be able to do that is, uh, you know, I'll show you finally, uh, when I come really to the end uh, and we'll take a look at the website as to where all the links are, where you can you can access some of the free content that we we share as well, as well as being able to connect with other leaders. But just to finish, I'm going to come into the settings here, revert that back. That kind of puts a shiver down your spine. Save mm -hmm. that. And then as we go back to the dashboard, you can see that we're using those terms. So I can take those reports. Uh, use that terminology, be consistent, be credible for certain audiences. I don't need to use them internally necessarily, but I can create those reports, download them, and then share them with inspectors, LA, and those, uh, you know, those outwards facing meetings so that they are credible. And I think that that, again, when we worry about not being credible or lack of evidence, we can play the game, we can, we can change the parameters internally and externally. And I think that's a massive uh, shift again when it comes down to how we feel about these processes. So finally, um, that's the platform. And obviously we've taken a very thorough look through. The last thing I would really want to look at is the website because we can access quite a lot from here. So nautilus.education. Uh, as we start to come through here, there's lots of insight. We've also got some, 
some links there. So we've got Nautilus High, which is our high school platform, which is the same build, but we can create departments, faculties, and it's scaled up. Um, Jack, can I just pause you there? Did you see that question come in um, from Shaquilla? No. We just said, uh, just then right. said, is Nautilus for primary only? And then, so I just wonder whether you might want to have a yeah. minute or two to show. Well, the, the, the high platform, yeah, the high platform, which, uh, have I got uh, uh, the high platform open? Um, is, there we go, the same build, but when we are in here and when we're looking at the filters and the headlines, uh, so when we're adding our users, for example, here, a leadership user, we can select their responsibilities. And if they are responsible for languages in here, we could obviously do uh, French, I don't know, German, uh, I don't think many do Chinese, but we can we can obviously create departments and faculties depending on how you do things. So we've got the full range of GCSE and also uh, A level studies in there, and uh, and that just enables us to be able to kind of create those leaders, assign them those departments, and then allow them to be able to look at each subject individually within there. It's a bigger scaled up version. The portfolio of content on the system is different. So rather than having early years and phonics, which we have on the primary one, we've got more of an emphasis on pastoral and transition as well. And we're also creating content, uh, <coughs> content as well uh, in relation to things like uh, transition from you know moving around the school, some other little things which are very specific that are helpful for high school. So, and again, you can create your own content, but basically a scaled up version so no not exclusive to primary and the primary version that we do have um it, it does cover middle as well most of the middle schools that we work with use that we've got some through schools that go from sort of three to 18. they use uh the the high or the primary the the it depends how they want to work or they set up two different systems depending on their dfe numbers uh we've got first junior alternative provision but to make the point, we've got schools now in Dubai, we've worked with schools in China, uh, schools in Kenya, and, and the settings are all different, but the principles, underlying principles, are all the same. So it is just to do with scale more often than not on how you manage the platform, because every platform looks different in every school because you are building that picture and using it in different ways and adding content. But just to finish off as we go down to the bottom here, uh, you can see here we've got um, just some good links that are helpful. The YouTube channel is a good place to be able to go in. We've got some short content, some very quick insights to be able to help people to know, um, you know, how to do things. Here we've got end of year book study, uh, and we've got some longer sessions in here and some shorter sessions, so some CPD and things like that. Uh, and that's a good place, obviously, to, for people to be able to to use that with their team when they, they have time. And then the community is a good place. We've also got the the um, the the newsletter in there. But the community is a good place to be able to share content. Uh, and once you head into here, then we've got 500 people on here or so. We just launched before Christmas. So we've, we're kind of building this and wanting people to really utilize connections, share content together. Uh, and as we start to go into here, we can go in and, and search. If I search in here for Nautilus content, um, then what that will do is that will give me all of the content that we upload, which is free. So we've got some webinars, we've got um, subject service, so different content that you can add to your system or share with colleagues on there. So there's some really good uh, additional content to build up that portfolio. And those are all accessible from the website, as is the 14-day trial and uh and the login places and things like that so everything down there tech support faq we've got sophie on hand to be able to help with things i am going to uh pop back to uh to finish off because whether or not there's any questions from anybody out there or whether or not david you'd uh, like to summarize or add anything really in relation to what we've been looking at today yeah well just to go on what uh shaquilla was saying really i've added into the into the chat that we would uh, love to do, you know, if you want to do a one-to-one -one, uh, demo with your SLT, either high school platform or the primary platform, that's entirely up to you. There is a link to the calendar in the chat. You can see that um, up, up there. Um, you can go and select a time and date that suits you. It's automated. You'll get a link to the, uh, to the actual webinar 
um, on the day on, for the day that you want, and we'll we'll be pleased to do that. Um, yeah, I mean, it's just to summarise, really, David. We talked right, go, rewinding right back to the beginning, under control, and in my head, I was, you know, I, I kept on coming back to these files, and how unmanageable, really, that system is hmm. for a head teacher, and to be able to use something like this to log in. You know what head teachers like. It could be nine o'clock at night, ten o'clock at night. It could be seven in the morning or wherever. If I needed to just touch base, to just check on something, I can do without having to reel every single file in there and locate something. Mm. All my teachers are using this, and I'm allowing my leaders to lead. Mm. I think that's a real key thing, <clears throat> and having the confidence that they're doing it right. Yeah, um, I think is, is is a key thing. So, yeah, it, it certainly ticks a lot of boxes. Yeah, well, hopefully today's session was a good thorough opportunity to make some key points. I know we were playing devil's advocate there at the start, really, and looking at some of the challenges, but they're all really common. All of those things are the things that we all feel and see. And the problem when it comes down to workload is all of these things over time are increased. And we're not really sort of reviewing things or using a little bit of technology. And at the end of the day, it's an iPad. It's the kind of thing we look on, you know, we use every day anyway in school. So can we get, you know, can we make sure that the iPad really helps us to do those things? So um, really good to be able to share things today. I feel it's action packed full of solutions today's session. Good to have a little think about these things and, and consider over the summer, like I say, hopefully, with a view to September, hitting the ground running, working in a very sustainable and efficient way and being able to kind of promote and drive school improvement in the right way. Um, so that's a, a really great, I'm, I'm just looking at the chat there, Turkey, fantastic. That sounds really interesting. We're, we are talking at the minute to schools. Uh, we've got schools currently, like I said, um, we were chatting the other week to a school in Kenya, weren't we, David? And, learning about how they do things so yeah shaquille if you if, if it'd be great to speak to you and your team to learn about your setting to talk about how things could help you uh it would be really positive i'd, I'd be really interested we're both really interested in how people do things elsewhere as well um and uh yeah hopefully we can look forward to to having that meeting but we'll finish off really where we are today and just you know thanks again david for for coming today and co-hosting uh, it's been a good session it's uh it's been useful to be able to share things we will finish things off by sort of closing the cameras and the mics we'll leave the chat open for a little bit play a video and everything and then we'll look to kind of download things today upload it to youtube send that link out so you can use it with your team revisit some of the key points as well and uh and get the benefit of that that recording really at a busy time of the year 